Number seven, define the following and give an example of each. And now we have dispersion force. So what is a dispersion force? So I guess we should just define it first and then we will give an example. Now dispersion forces, basically any atom that you have will always, or not atom, but any compound or molecule that you have will always exert dispersion forces. These forces are there 100% of the time, no exceptions. A dispersion force is a force that comes about because of uh, something called temporary dipoles or sometimes called instantaneous dipoles. Instantaneous. Instantaneous. Come on, Christina. There we go. So, Dispersion forces are forces that occur due to temporary or instantaneous, instantaneous dipoles. Well, what, what is a dipole, right? Never seen this term before, dipole. Now, a dipole is a unequalness in sharing electrons. So if someone, you know, if a molecule or a compound has a dipole, that means that there is unequal sharing of electrons. I'm just gonna put E minus as electrons. So there's an unequal sharing of electrons in a molecule or a compound, doesn't really matter. But I'll, I'll guess I'll just say molecule. Now. Generally speaking, we can look at two different uh, types of compounds where you have a symmetrical compound and you have an asymmetrical or a different co compound. So maybe we'll do Cl, Cl, and here is the Lewis structure for this, right? You got the six lone electrons around the center. And then maybe I can do HCl, right? We have H. Cl. Maybe I'll just draw that bond in black here, just to kind of highlight. And then if we draw the Lewis structure for this, you just have the six electrons around the chlorine. Okay. Now, these are two different molecules. This is completely symmetrical, since there's two chlorines on opposite sides of the bond. So this would be classified as nonpolar. And this molecule, if we split this down the middle, this is not symmetrical. H on one side, Cl on the other. And every time that you have a difference in symmetry, that's asymmetrical, that's polar. But now, both of these molecules will both have dispersion forces. So this one will have dispersion forces. And this one will also have dispersion forces. I just drew these here just to show you that it doesn't matter what type of molecule you have. Whether you're polar or nonpolar, you will both have dispersion forces because everything in life is not perfect, right? So even if you have a perfect symmetrical molecule, you will still form a temporary dipole. Temporary dipoles is when the electrons inside the bond... So I'll strip this away and I'll put them right in the middle. Sometimes these will not be symmetrical. Maybe this side will be a little bit closer to chlorine one day, or maybe the other one will be a little bit closer to chlorine. And because of that shift, they will form charges. When you have your electrons being shifted towards you, that element will be partial negative, meaning that you gained those electrons. The partial sign for a dipole is this little kind of groovy S here. So whenever you see a groovy S, that's a dipole. And it kind of, yeah, that's a much better uh, picture of that. So this would be partial negative if the electrons are moving closer to that chlorine. And then on this side, it would be partial positive. Now, you can do the same thing for two different atoms or two of the same atoms. 
So maybe right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip away the uh, polar dispersion force, HCL. Just know that, you know, it's going to be having dispersion forces as well. But just to show you that if I just add another CLCL, right? So here we go. And if I strip that bond away and I represent them as two electrons, the partial negative of the one Cl2 will have to bind up with the partial positive because remember, opposites attract. So two negatives don't want to come together and two positives don't want to come together. So the positive will be showing towards the negative of the other one which means that this one has to be the partial negative, and the chain just keeps going, which means that temporarily this electron will be a little bit closer to the other chlorine. And that's what this is trying to be showing you as, that sometimes those electrons that are being shared are not right smack in the middle. If the electrons are more towards the negative side, or that atom, that will be more partial negative, and it will want to form that attractive bond temporarily with the positive of the other one. But remember, these are instantaneous and these are temporary, which means that those electrons will go right back to the, to the middle, and then you won't have any positive or negative anymore. And maybe it will shift again. So maybe it'll shift to the other side, and all the signs will change. But... I'm just showing you here that in this instance, the negatives will hook up with the positives here. So that is all that dispersion forces are. It's this temporary force. It's not a permanent force. It's a temporary first force between two molecules, and it's because of those instantaneous sharing of electrons. That one goes to one side, the other one goes to the other side. And then they form those temporary dipoles, but then they will shift and they will rearrange and they'll do it again. So it's just all about this temporary idea. Um, so unequal sharing of electrons in a molecule, specifically in a bond that we're talking about here. So maybe I'll get rid of molecule and I'll put a bond here. But I think you get the point. What do you think? So we defined it and we gave an example. We could give an example of this and how the partial negatives always want to hook up with those partial positive negatives, negatives with positives. And I think we're good to go. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the uh, comments down below if this helped you out. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video, and I look forward to helping you out in future questions. Um, have a great day. Okay, bye.